1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to be ready to perhaps mark some things uh, in your Bible. How many of you, it's your, your habit to mark in your Bibles? Raise your hand if you do mark in your Bible. Yeah, many of us do. And uh, I don't think it's a sin if you don't or, if it's, a, or a sin that you do. And uh, all right, I'm preaching today on why nobody should mark in their Bible. I saw your hands. I'm uh, not going to do that today. But uh, I, I like to. Preacher, what happens when you get it to where you can't read it anymore? That happens, amen. And what you do is you go out and buy another one. That's right. And then you complain about it because things are in different places, amen. <laughs> so, amen. So, you know, we're, 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 we're Baptists. That's one of our distinctives is complaining, amen. So, we complain. We complain when, uh, you know, when you can't read it. And then when you get a new Bible, you complain when you can't, can't find it, amen. So, well, let's look at some things here this morning. First Corinthians chapter number 2. And I um, just want you to see some things, mark them if you would. Verse 14, we're going to break this down here this morning for a few minutes. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the natural man, just underline that, the natural man. And then verse 15, the Bible says, but he that is spiritual, if you mark that please. And then verse chapter 3, verse number 1. Paul says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. If you mark that word, you ought to have underlined in your Bible the natural man, spiritual, and carnal. And just to be very uh, plain this morning, everybody in here is in one of those three groups. Uh, everybody in here. By the way, not everybody in here, but everybody in the world. Yeah. All right, you can, they're one of three, all right? And the question is, this morning, what does God say you are? All right? And uh, not, not preaching, what do you, where do you think I am? Where does God know you are? All right? Interesting, the first question at uh, Bible trivia, you ready? Don't answer it out loud, but uh, first Bible trivia, what is the first question that God ever asked in the Bible? Here it is. Where art thou? Yeah. Where art thou? All right, not the first first question in the Bible is from, from chapter three, verse one of Genesis, where God was or Satan was getting trying to get to question the word of God, yea, hath God said. The first question that God asks in the Bible is, Adam, where art thou? Now we remind ourselves this morning that, and that's 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 the title of the message today. Where are you? Where are you? Um, now, when God asks a question, we remind ourselves he's not asking for information. Right. <laughs> he didn't ask Adam where he was because he didn't know where Adam was. He wanted Adam to know where Adam was. You know, we divide people differently, don't we? We divide people in upper class, and middle class, and lower class. And, you know, the world uses the, the blue book of society. And it uses the bank book of finance. God doesn't. God uses his book. It's yeah. the word of God. Amen. And the word of God. And, and uh, you say, well, preacher, why are you preaching all this today? Because there's one I want all of us to be. Spiritual. Okay. Now, the thing is, and, 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 and the Bible is our map. It, it tells us how to get there. Uh, it'll tell you how to be spiritual. Okay. But in order to, to get where you need to go, you need to know where you are. All right, for, for instance, uh, a few days ago, uh, we went to uh, Bonners Ferry, Idaho. Now, uh, uh, we first stopped off at uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. And then from Rapid City, South Dakota, we went to the, uh, oh, I almost said the Grand Canyon. We did not go there. Um, <laughs> we're all them dead presidents, sorry, man. And, uh, Mount Rushmore, and we went there. And then we uh, went on, and, and, and but you know what? One of the things when I, and I used uh, my phone, this phone right here, and I punched it in, and uh, where we wanted to go. And you know, one of the questions it asked was, where are you now? Right? From your, ended up from my present location, right? And I put in, yeah, my present location, all right? And it's interesting that on our way out, because we went to Rushmore, we actually went through South Dakota. But on the way home, the quicker way is through North Dakota and down, all right? And we went through the great, wonderful cities of Minneapolis and Chicago, and we didn't get shot. I deserve a t-shirt for that, but anyways. 
You have to know where you are. All right, in order to know where you are going. All right, and so the uh, Lord will, will, will help us with all that. And you, you've ever been into a, a, a mall? I mean, a big mall. Not, not this, this sorry thing anymore. I mean, it's pitiful when you go there now. I, you know, I'm going to talk like an old person. I don't remember, remember when there were stores in every one of those places. You go in there today, you're like, wow. Praise the Lord for Rural King. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> Rural King. Love Rural King. Anyways, they're not paying me to say that, but anyways. But you go in a big mall, and you, you look at that marquee, and there it is. And, 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 and you say, well, I want to go into that store or, or whatever. And, 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 the, and the beautiful thing is, you look on that map, and it says, you are here. Right? So if I'm going there, I also have to know where I am right now. And so uh, we want to take the word of God and do that uh, this morning. All right. Number one, So let's talk about that. The natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man. All right. So let's take them in order as they're given here in the Bible. But number one, are you natural? Are you natural? And a natural man just does. Uh, and, and I say man, I, I mean mankind, ladies, men, Young people, uh, middle-aged, older people, all right? Uh, and the natural man is doing what comes natural, all right? <laughs> and maybe you'd say, well, yeah, preacher, that sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a natural man. Well, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, that we are by nature the children of wrath. Mm -hmm. yep. We are by nature the children of wrath. Well, let me give you some marks of a natural man. And all three of these points are going to have three marks. And again, you let God show you where you are this morning. All right. Number one this morning, the natural man, number one, is born into the natural world. He is born into the natural world. All right. He's been born once. All right? He's been born one time. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 3, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be what? Born again. Yeah. All right. But the natural man hasn't been born twice. He's only been born once. Right. All right. I I'm told that a former vice president of our country heard uh, that a president of our country uh, was talking about how he had been born again. And this former vice president said this. He said, and I quote, uh, well, they asked him, he said, well, have you been born again? He said, no. He said, I count myself lucky to have been born once. You know what? That man, unless he gets born again, he will not think himself lucky to be born once. My Bible says of Judas, listen, been better if he had never even been born. You see, here's the honest truth according to the word of God. You'll regret being born at all if you've never been born again. Right. The natural man has been born into the natural world. You see, see, he who has been born once will die twice. Physically, spiritually. Yep. The be, he who has been born twice will only die once. I will die physically, but will never die spiritually. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. All right, and, and so we uh, we understand that, and so uh, how important that is. All right, uh, that we are born again. All right, but the problem is what we have received from the natural birth. All right, we received sin. All right, we received a sin nature. How many of you are, are parents in here this morning? Would you raise your hand if you're a parent? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you? Uh, many hands went up. How many of you? And I'm looking. How many of you had to teach your children how to do wrong? Would you raise your hand? Huh? Not a one. You mean you didn't have to sit down with your kids and say, listen, if you're going to fit in. Now, the other kids are selfish. The other kids get mean. The other kids lie. The other kids steal. And we want you to fit in with the other kids. So we want to teach you a few things. No, you know what? I have to teach my children not to steal. I have to teach my children not to be mean. You see, they came with that. All right? It is their nature. How many of you have ever seen, you illustrate it this way, how many of you have ever seen an apple with a wormhole in it? You know what I'm talking about? All right? Now let me help you with this. When you see that apple with a wormhole in it, you do not have to worry if that worm is in there. That hole did not, the worm did not use that hole to get in. That worm used that hole to get out. 
It's true. You see, what happened is, and, and don't miss this, that worm was hatched in the heart of that apple. Yeah. It was born in the blossom. And so there it was, it was there in perhaps, you know, that little embryo form. And then the apple uh, was made, and then he became a worm and said, you know what? I think I want to see what else is out there. And he wormed his way out. You see, it was, it was in the heart of that apple, and it just came to the surface. All right? And that's the way you and I are. We are sinners in our hearts. All right? And it comes out, does it not? Our temper comes out. Our selfishness comes out. Our greed comes out. Whatever it is, it comes out. The Bible says in Psalm 58, don't turn to verse 3. The Bible says uh, that babies and mankind, we lie as soon as we're born. Think of that. You, you, and you, you parents know exactly what I'm talking about, and especially you moms. That baby's been fed. That baby's been changed. That baby's comfortable. But that baby wants help. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, you had just fed it. That baby starts crying. And the husbands and wives start elbowing. Your turn. No, your turn. No, I didn't, you know. <laughs> and I'd be lying to you. I'd be lying to you if I, there were times where I pretended I was asleep. <laughs> they could get up. <laughs> you look at that baby. You know what that baby's doing? Lying to you. I'm hungry. Not hungry. I need changed. They don't need changed. They're lying to you. They're lying. They are. Them cute little things are liars. Amen? They are. That's just the truth. All right? It's natural. All right? We are born into the natural world. Think of this. If you could take all the good qualities of every person who's ever lived and put it into one person, that person would still need to be saved. Yeah. Amen? I mean, if you did that, you would still need to be saved. All right? By nature. By nature. There's nothing good in us. We are the children of wrath by nature. Number two this morning, we are born into the natural world. Number two, the natural man, number two, is blind to the spiritual world. Yeah. Look at verse 14. Don't miss it. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. The word receiveth, do you see that word receiveth in verse 14? It has the idea of welcoming spiritual things. They are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually understood. Now, a natural man can come to church. He may enjoy the music or she may enjoy the music. Uh, they may enjoy, uh, I mean, uh, the, the friendly church. They may enjoy uh, music. They may enjoy a Sunday school campaign. If a pastor gets up and says, hey, we're going to have a contest. And, uh, you know, guys versus girls, and, and, the, and, and the guys win, the girls are going to throw pies in the guys. I mean, a natural man can like that. I mean, who doesn't want to see somebody get a pie in the face of it? I mean, a natural man can enjoy a budget, making a budget, uh, 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 you know, meeting budget. A, a natural man can enjoy a building project, but he doesn't understand the things of the Spirit of God. Look at chapter 1, verse 18. Interesting, we'll see a verse repeated here. Chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Yeah. And then chapter 2, verse 14, yeah. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. You see, an unsaved person doesn't understand why we get excited about being saved. Yeah. They don't understand. I mean, Brother Bill, we sing that song, How great thou art. That excites me. I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. I'm on the winning side. And, uh, and, and listen, I get excited about those songs. Sometimes I want to shout. Sometimes I want to cry. Sometimes I just want to say, praise the Lord. Amen. You know why? The songs do something for me. Sure. I understand what it's about because I've been saved, all right? And, uh, but a, a, a natural man doesn't understand that. He, he, may understand, he may appreciate the externals. If you're a natural man, can I say that it's interesting, a nat, don't wish a natural man in heaven. He wouldn't enjoy heaven. Right. You know what we're going to do in heaven? Praise the Lord. Right. I mean, hey, why would somebody want to praise the Lord? They don't want to do it on the earth. Yeah. Think about it. 
You wouldn't want to put an actual man, listen, unless you get saved. All right? By the way, we've all been there. I thought we got saved. We didn't have any interest in these things. Right. Notice he says in verse 14, there's, there's no appreciation, no understanding. He says here in verse 14, neither can he know them. Neither can he know them. You see, a, a natural man can't understand these things if he wanted to. Right. You see, don't get the idea that you bring your intellect into this book. You can't do it. Until you're, under, uh, until you're born again, you'll never understand this book. It makes no sense to a lost person. All right? you, you may get the words, you may hear the words, but you won't hear the music. All right? All right? They, but they are spiritually understood. Notice in verse 14, the last words of verse 14, they are spiritually discerned. Look at verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. All right? They are spiritually discerned. Now, why can't an, a, a lost person understand that? You know what? They don't have the receiver. They don't have the Lord inside. Right. Now, what I'm getting ready to explain to you, we have, this is common knowledge. But if you explain this to somebody 100 years ago, they'd look at you and say, you're nuts. But in this room right now, there are waves. Yep. Right? I have in my office. If you go in my office, there's a television there. You say, preacher, why is there a television there? Well, it's a television that our family's had for a long time, and I didn't know where else to put it, so there it is. <laughs> True. I don't use it much. I, I, uh, I plugged, I plugged uh, Brother Napper, Roger Napper, the missionary, sent me a DVD of him preaching. He sent to the prison. I thought in my mind, I think, I think there's a DVD player floating around this shirt somewhere. I found it, plugged it in, and listened to then I did what any good preacher would do. I took a picture of him preaching on TV. And I said, pray for me. I'm watching a liberal preacher on TV right now. He thought it was funny. Amen. <laughs> but that, that, that television set has a, a receiver. It has, a, a, has an antenna. And you go in there today and you could probably watch, I don't know, Gunsmoke or, you know, maybe a sporting event that gets, gets a few channels, all right? But listen, if it did not have that receiver, if it did not have that antenna, it wouldn't pick any of that up. Does that make sense? Right. You see, we have the Lord inside. And the natural man doesn't have that antenna. Jesus said of, of Nicodemus, who was a very brilliant man, he said, are you not a master in Israel and don't understand these things? You see, it wasn't an intellectual problem. It was a heart problem. He needed to be, as it says there in John 3, he must be born again. You see, sometimes if you're witnessing to somebody, let me help us right here. If you're witnessing to a lost person and that lost person says, I just don't see it. Don't argue with them. They don't see it. Right. They don't understand. Number three, third characteristic. I need to move on. Number one, he's born into the natural world. Number two, he's blind to the spiritual world. Number three, he's bound to the material world. You see, this world is all he knows. He's a materialist. He has no capacity for spiritual things. Interesting, Bill Turner, Jude verse 19 says of the unsaved person, he is sensual having not the spirit. You see, he just lives by the senses. He's, he's a natural man. He lives by the senses. And can, and can I just, well, do I have time for this? I guess I will. I need to move on. <laughs> There's so much I want to say. People need the Lord. Amen. People need the Lord. I will say this. And I, I hope you vote. Right. I hope you vote biblical values. But can I say this? That whether it be capitalism, socialism, or communism, they are all three forms of materialism. Yes. No. All right? All and you know what capitalism is? Can I tell you this? And I believe in limited government. I really do. All right? But you know what capitalism does at its best? It's like a, it's like a good dog's life. What's a good, what, what's a good dog, have, a, a, a dog that has a good life? Well, he has food. He has shelter. He has someone that cares for him, rubs his head. And he has some ambition. Maybe you throw a frisbee at him every now and again. And you know what? That, that's what capitalism does. We get food, we get you know, shelter and all those things. But you know what? Uh, listen, you still need the Lord. Right. Amen? You still need the right. Lord. The answer is not right. co communism or socialism or capitalism. The answer is Christ. Right. Augustine said that there is a God-shaped vacuum in every man's heart. And man will never be satisfied until he knows the Lord. The natural man, he cannot know God. 
He cannot fellowship with God. He must be born again. Number two, I've got to move on a lot more I'd like to say. Number two, write this down, the spiritual man. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual. Now listen, the natural man does what is, comes natural. The spiritual man does what, that's what comes spiritually. He does that which comes spiritually, all right? He has been born twice. Look at verses 11 and 12 of our text. Chapter 2. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. But now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Three marks of the spiritual man. You ready? Number one, he lives by the spirit. He lives by the spirit. Verse 12, he says, and you have received the spirit of God. Learn this about salvation. Salvation is not primarily getting man into heaven. Salvation, that's a byproduct. Salvation primarily is getting God into man. Right. Amen. It is. All right. And so we need to understand that a spiritual man has God on the inside. Saved people are not natural people trying to do better. We have been supernaturally changed by Almighty God. Uh -huh. People use this illustration. I use this illustration that. That they're trying to become a frog. They're a tadpole, but they're trying to become a frog. And there's a lot of churches that, are, that have that philosophy. Well, there's a frog in every tadpole. So if you go to church and just rub your shoulders with them and, 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 and learn some things and, and different things, and eventually you'll be that frog that God wanted you always to be. But it was in you all along. You ever talk to someone like that? I talk to people all the time. When did you get saved? Well, I've always been saved. They have that philosophy. I was a tadpole, now I'm a frog. Friend, listen, that's not Bible Christianity. No, you know what Bible Christianity is? We were frogs, but we have been made princes yeah. by the kiss of grace. Amen? That's the Bible analogy. Amen. Now look at verse, uh, notice, so, so he lives by the Spirit. The Spirit of God lives inside of us. Number two, write this down. A spiritual man not only lives by the Spirit. Number two, he learns from the Spirit. Verse 12, he says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Do you realize there is no, not absolutely zero room for any of us to brag? Right. If you have any knowledge at all, it is God. If you have any discernment at all, it is God. If you have any victory at all, it is God. It is God. It is God. That's right. We learn from the spirit. God has eliminated us. The Bible says, don't turn there, Proverbs 20, 27, that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Aren't you glad that God, by his spirit, aren't you glad by the word of God, that God has shined his light on some things in your life? Amen. Amen. Uh, no bragging of ourselves. I'd be wandering in darkness. I'd be dead in trespasses and sins if it weren't for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Let me give you a third thing because we need to move on to the third point. The spiritual man lives by the spirit. The spiritual man learns from the spirit. Number three, the spiritual man is liberated through the spirit. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The word judge there has the idea of discernment. It's a legal word that means to make an examination. You see, we're, we're able now because we're saved. We're able to make judgments because God lives on the inside. I'm able to make good decisions, not because Brian Lott's any good, because Brian Lott's no good. But Brian Lott can now make good decisions because God's on the inside. He helps him make good decisions. Brian Lott in the flesh wants to make all kinds of bad decisions, but praise God for the Holy Spirit who said, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't go there. Don't watch that. Don't listen to that. Watch this. Listen to that. Go here. Say this. Be that. It's the Lord. Amen. Amen. He enables us. And there's liberty. I'm not bound by this world. I'm not bound by sin anymore. I'm liberated to live for Jesus Christ. Verse 15, he says, He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. What's that mean? It means he understands the unsaved, but the unsaved don't understand him. 
Hey, let's be honest, folks. The world thinks we're nuts. We're crazy. We're nuts. That's what the world thinks. From we understand them, but they don't understand us. What compels a person to go to church three times a week? What compels a person to show up on a Saturday morning and help out a church? What compels a person to give to, to a van so we can pick up boys and girls and men and women and bring them? What compels them uh, to give the missions? The world doesn't understand that. Live for today. Live for now. Live for all we can get. That's what the world thinks. Doesn't understand that, does it? The natural man, they don't understand it. Heard about a guy who got saved. After he got saved, Brother Drew, he took, he was a drummer in a nightclub. Took his drumsticks and threw them through the drum. He said to him, he said, what happened to you? Are you sick? He said, no, I just got well. Amen. The world doesn't understand that. Right. Number three, I need to move on. The third man is the carnal man. Chapter three, verse one, and I, brethren, Notice who he's talking to, not lost people. Right. Could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Listen, the natural man does what comes naturally. The spiritual man does what comes supernaturally. The carnal man, though, does what comes unnaturally. Oh, he's saved. Verse 1, he's saved. Mm -hmm. I, brethren, not speak unto you as unto carnal, but as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2, I fed you with milk and not with me. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. I've given you three marks of the natural man and the spiritual man. Can I give you three marks of the carnal man? Number one, he's defeated. Saved, but defeated. You see, the natural or the carnal man cannot walk, he cannot work, he cannot war spiritually. Spiritually, he says here, verse number one, he says, they're spiritual babies. Spiritual babies. Now, nothing wrong with being a spiritual baby. Amen. Every child of God, when you get saved, you are a babe in Christ. No. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is. If you're, is, if you're still a baby and you've been saved 20, 30, 40 years. Amen. That's the problem. I mean, if, 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 if you, I remember when my, my kids were little and, and uh, all right now, come on now. Come on now. You can do it. Come on now. Come on. Oh! Yay! I remember, I remember those days. I mean, you might have no video tape you doing those things that you did. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Yeah, you know what? You have to do that. You know what? Yeah, my kids are on their maiden voyage these, these weeks, amen? What the, re, what the reapply them into the church, amen? They've been, they've been gone too long, what the, you know? someone who's been saved a long time to go to church. Come on. Come on now. Let's go to church. Come on now. Come on now. Bible time. Come on now. Babies in Christ. Babies are great, but you know, the Bible even says this. It's time to grow up. Right. It's time to grow up. Can I say that I believe that the average believer is carnal. Yeah. The average Christian is carnal. Now, not the normal Christian. The normal Christian is spiritual. But I'd say the average Christian in churches today, they're carnal. Vance Abner, who I enjoy quoting, as you know, said this. He said, the church today is so subnormal that when a person becomes normal to the rest of the people, he seems abnormal. Mm. What a phrase. Yeah. 
Defeated. Defeated. No, no victory. And listen, I, I, if you sin, you have a pastor who loves you, will pray for you, and all those things, and, 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 and will help you, and I'm not saying that. You know what's better than sinning all the time? Getting victory in the first place. Amen? Lord. Number two, a carnal believer is defeated. Number two, a carnal believer is dependent. Verse two, he says, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. You know, it's sad to so many believers. The only spiritual growth they get is spoon fed sermons from the pulpit. Yeah, that's all they get. We have people in church every single week. The last time they opened their Bible was the last time they were in church. Yeah. Turn me to Hebrews chapter 5. I believe the writer was Paul, but that's another point for another day. Mm. Hebrews chapter number 5. Notice what the writer of Hebrews, if you want me to be more politically correct, had to say. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, it says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. Yeah. For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as having need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their sentence, senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know what the writer of Hebrews had to say? He said, I'd like to give you a filet mignon right now. I'd like to give you some meat. I'd like to preach the whole counsel of God. I'd like to tell you some things. But if I didn't, you wouldn't be able to chew it. And if you did chew it, you wouldn't be able to swallow it. You did swallow it, you wouldn't be able to digest it. So I gotta give you some formula. <laughs> I gotta give you some strained peas. Yeah. Right, that is a blessing, amen. Kids must not have taste buds. That's all I can say for them, amen. Gross. Mm -hmm. I, I should have been able to do that, but you know what? You couldn't handle those things. You know what, friend? You ought to be able to handle anything from this book. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. The whole counsel of God. The preacher ought not have to say, you know what? Well, if I preached on that, so and so would get mad. Mm -hmm. No. So and so would get their feelings hurt. Carn. Carn. <laughs> Several weeks ago, someone put up, I think it was Facebook or one of the social medias. The only reason I saw it is whoever posted it, 20 of my preacher friends liked it or reshared it. Mm -hmm. And the phrase was this. A preacher ought not, your pastor ought to be able to speak to you about something and you not leave the church. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my pastor is like, 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 share, share, share. Amen. Carnal. Carnal. Number three, we'll go back to our text as we finish this morning. The carnal believer is not only defeated and dependent. Number three, he's divisive. Divisive. He says in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 3, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Paulus, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed. Even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted Apollos water. But God gave the increase. Yeah. I'm amazed in almost 25 years of ministry. It's hard for me to believe I'm saying that. But I'm amazed in 25 years of ministry. What people get all their feathers up about. Yeah. Why well, I don't know why we do it that way. I'm not talking about Bible things. I'm talking about the trivial little things. Yeah. Well, such and such church and that pastor always and. Mm. And 
I've said, said, said to myself and I've said to my wife many times, you know, I've never seen that person who got all worked up about that. I've never seen them get half that worked up about a lost soul. Mm. I heard a preacher say one time in, in the story of Jonah being the man of God. He said, the man of God doesn't mean mind being swallowed by whales as much as he does nibbled by minnows. Yeah. For over a year we were in evangelism. Can I tell you that pastor after pastor that we were with and pastor's wife after pastor's wife that we were with were discouraged. You know what discourages a pastor? Coming Sunday after Sunday, Sunday night after Sunday, Wednesday night after Wednesday night, I wonder who's going to get offended today. Who's going to get offended today? Can I tell you in almost 25 years of ministry, I've not seen churches hurt by natural people or spiritual people. But I'm telling you what, a carnal person will split a church like that. Yeah, it will. Friend, we could have World War III on our hands by tonight's service. Sure. We could have. You say, preacher, man, we're seeing people saved, if not in our church. And again, every week someone, someone is getting saved or leading someone to Christ. It's exciting. We're getting those praise reports. And listen, you say, well, preacher, I think I thought things are going good in our church. They are. But we better be careful. Okay. By the way, look around me in this auditorium. Empty pew, empty pew, empty pew. Part pew, empty pew, empty pew, part pew, empty, empty, part, empty, part, empty, part, part, empty, empty, part, empty, part, part, empty, 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 part, 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 empty, empty. I don't know, I've been told that more, there used to be more people used to come to this church. What are they at, preacher? Carnal. Carnal. I've had people leave for 25 years of my ministry, and not one time, not one time, not one time, and someone sat down with me and said, Preacher, here's what the Bible says. You're not doing it, so we're leaving. Not one time. Not one time. I told my wife one time, I said, I think I'm going to try this. I'm going to preach heresy one Sunday. <laughs> for two reasons. First of all, see if anybody catches it. Yeah. And then number two, for them to come up and say, aha! And I'll say, good job! I have my fingers crossed the whole mess and didn't believe any of that. But I just want to see if it worked. Divisive. Divisive. God knows. Where are you? You natural man, you need to be saved. A spiritual man, by the way, you're either one or you've been three. We've all been one. Amen? Yeah. Natural man. Yeah. So if you're saved, you're either carnal or you're spiritual. And by the way, if you're spiritual right now, you can be carnal and right. you're second. Absolutely. Just like that. Man, we still have that flesh. Yep. It's awful. Okay. It's awful. Yeah. It has to be crucified. My flesh is. Yep. I need God's help. Amen. Yep. You don't need a carnal pastor. You say, well, we better not have a carnal pastor. I couldn't, I wouldn't stand for that. Are you carnal? That's good. I have just as much right to be carnal as you do. Don't have any right. Amen. Amen. I want to be spiritual. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads bowed and eyes are closed this morning as we consider the message today. The question remains, where 